The Insider. สวัสดีครับ and welcome to The Insider. A few weeks ago, as the Thai nation began to mourn the loss of His Majesty King p u m i p o n a d u n y a d e t members of the public were given permission to enter Dusit Mahaprasad Town Hall in the Grand Palace to personally pay their respect to their late king. In this scene, we saw a distinguished gentleman handing out refreshment to the thousands of the people as they were waiting in line to enter palace ground. He was there with his family and staff, and he was giving out fresh apples from his home country. It was the ambassador of New Zealand to Thailand, His Excellency Mr. Ben King. That image of the New Zealand ambassador among the crowds of the Thai mourners shall be etched in the memory of the Thai people. And so today we are very honored for the opportunity to meet with the ambassador himself. And especially being invited to his official residence in Bangkok. สวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับ Well, thank you very much, Excellency, for uh, giving us the honor, you know, for kindly inviting us to your residence here. I am grateful for the opportunity to come and to meet with you in person, and of course. Um, before we talk about what happened in Thailand, uh, just recently we learned of the um, earthquake situation in in New Zealand. We are in Thailand, feel w o r r y and sorry for what happened in in um, New Zealand. Would you mind sharing with us? I mean, update the situation. Sure. Thank you very much for your concern. Uh, the earthquake um, in New Zealand recently was was very large. It was 7.8 on the Richter scale, which is a very significant earthquake. Mm. Um, but we in New Zealand live with earthquakes as a way of life. It's mm -hmm. something that we live with every day, and we are very well prepared to deal with them. That's so great. everybody in New Zealand knows what to do in an earthquake, how to make yourself safe. And after the Christchurch earthquakes in 2011, mm -hmm. New Zealand. Increased the building codes quite significantly, so the chances of a catastrophic building failure or of a building collapsing are, are now very, very much less um, in New Zealand. So um, we, even with that big earthquake and the disruption, we only had two fatalities, mm -hmm. which is too, too many, but actually very good for an earthquake of that size. Mm -hmm. And the response has been fantastic. I must say we've had um, great response from the Thai people, a, a lot of concern, and also from your government. So we've received condolences uh, from the Prime Minister, from the Foreign Minister, and even from the uh, Parliamentary Friendship Group. We received a note yesterday, so um, we've been very grateful for the concern and the friendship shown mm -hmm. by the Thai people and the Thai government. And of course, we do are concern about what happened, uh, and of course, had the negative negative impact on. Uh, our friends' mm. life and um, you know, well-being. So we hope uh, that will not happen again. Mm. But of course, I'm very pleased to uh, know that you are well prepared, mm. and the, the Kiwi New Zealander uh, being well prepared mm. for um, confronting uh, what might happen in the future. How long have you been uh, living in? I mean, working in Thailand, e x a c t l y Funnily enough, today, the day that we are doing this interview, is the first anniversary ah. of my first day in Thailand. Oh, so really? I've been here. I've been professionally here exactly for one year uh -huh. today. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And of course, just recently, um, you know, we are uh, in the mourning period. And of course, uh, not long ago, uh, there was a, a touching image. You know, we saw um, you with your family and your staff. Mm. Um, were standing, you know, at the s a n a m l u a n g grounds, and um, offering the kiwi apple to the Thai mourners. It was very touching. It was something that uh, we feel this is a gesture that we highly appreciated from from you know our friends. What is The motive you know, that made you uh, do that. Mm. Well, um, it's interesting you say it was touching to you because it was touching for us too, for mm -hmm. for my family and I to mm -hmm. to be at Sanam Luang um, and to see the grief of the Thai people. 
and to be able to help in a very small way, just mm -hmm. through a gesture, as you say, to um, uh, help on the day with people because it was amazing to see people, a lot of old people, young people, mm -hmm. people who were sick, people who were blind, uh, people from the hill tribes from all over Thailand who were uh, had come to pay their respects to His Majesty mm -hmm. and uh, had been standing for many hours and it was hot. Mm. <laughs> uh, and, and so um, coming out, we were at the gates where people came out and to give them a nice cool crisp apple I think mm -hmm. um, was, was nice and to see their grief and to see them respond positively mm -hmm. to uh, uh, my family and my children and my wife and the other members of the New Zealand community who were doing it. My children said it was really nice to um, uh, see see people who were sad and to help make them happy. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was something that really um, touched them and, and certainly touched us. The motivation behind it was this is something that actually the New Zealand community in Thailand, not the embassy, the New Zealanders who live and work here, mm -hmm. had been doing for three weeks. So we went on the third week, and they'd been partnering with the Royal Thai Police, with the CIB, and they'd given them a stand. And uh, on the day we were there, it was 6,000 apples, and I think 1,000 loaves of bread or something, mm -hmm. and uh, we were able to just go and, and uh, uh, distribute these. It was very, very nice. So it wasn't a publicity raising exercise, it was really just we were joining in with the New Zealand mm -hmm. community, and people, uh, it, it just captured the imagination, I think, of people. Mm -hmm. that so you said it is a small thing that you have done, uh, that you did for, for um, the Thai people for this occasion. But as for the Thai people, this is a big thing, mm -hmm. which is coming from a big heart. Mm -hmm. So once again, thank you very much for uh, your thoughtfulness, mm -hmm. for your generosity. We're talking about the relationship between our two countries in, um, you know, related to um, high level. Uh, we said, I have learned that um, sometime before I was born, maybe I think, I think 1962, mm -hmm. uh, Their Majesty had I mean, visited New Zealand. Would you be able to share that significant moment with us? Sure. It, it, it was a very significant moment, I think, at a number of levels. So Their Majesties visited in August 1962. They visited for eight days, which you imagine now can you imagine now, sort of a, a, a royal tour for eight days? It's, Very it's, long. it's so long, and, yes. but I think it was a long way. And New Zealand and Thailand then were so different. Mm -hmm. So, right now you can catch a flight from Bangkok to Auckland. It'll take you 12 hours direct on yes. TG. Yes. It took Their Majesties 22 hours. At one point, I was reading in the history because the planes were slower and they had to stop more. I was reading that uh, uh, Queen Surikit was missing her children and she, the, the uh, Prime Minister offered to arrange a telephone call to Thailand, oh. but no cell phones. It was a really big deal. It was actually a newspaper story about how difficult it was to set up a radio telephone mm -hmm. call patched through to Thailand so that Queen Surika, and she did, she was able to talk to her children mm -hmm. um, from New Zealand. So it's a very different um, uh, Thailand and a very different New Zealand in terms of technology and you know those sorts of things. At the time, there were 57 Thai students in New Zealand on scholarships and they all came to meet their majesties. Right now there's over 3,300 Thai students in New Zealand. So if you just think 1962 to 2016, they were very different times. And it's a really great um, visit. If, you, if I've been reading through the history of the visit and things happen like when their majesties arrived in Wellington and they went their first stop, they couldn't get out of the cars mm -hmm. because there were so many thousands of people pressed up against the cars trying to look at them and they, there was no oh. no concern for their safety but they safety. had to get police around the cars to make space mm -hmm. so they could even open the doors to get out because it was amazing for New Zealanders. It was the first visit by a foreign monarch mm -hmm. and a reigning monarch oh. ever. So we'd had, first visit. we'd had Queen Elizabeth who mm -hmm. was our queen but we'd never had a king from another country. And I think people were amazed to see this amazing king young, dashing, smart. People were stunned that he made speeches with no notes. Mm -hmm. They were very taken with Queen Surikit and her beauty and her wardrobe. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of interest and thousands of people lined the streets 
wherever they went, right through New Zealand, and they went to Auckland, Rotorua, to Hamilton, to Wellington, to Christchurch, and Dunedin. These are all, um, you know, some big cities, some quite small provincial towns. So they went right through and enjoyed, and they were always running late because their majesties always wanted to stop and talk to people or to see and enjoy the beauty of, of where they were going. So a very striking experience in a very special time. My parents still remember mm -hmm. the visit of their majesties and a lot of New Zealanders did because it was such an amazing thing to have a monarch from Asia come and visit. And it really put Thailand on the map for New Zealand. Oh. So we established our diplomatic relationship in 1956 this year we celebrate the 60 years of the diplomatic relationship. But actually, I would say that the visit of His Majesty the King and Queen Surikit was the first moment that really put our relationship together and I think really put Thailand in the minds of New Zealand in a way that it never would have in any other way. We'd have no reason really. So out of, this, out of that visit, I think you can say we've got a great friendship and we've got amazing cooperation in a number of areas. But I would, I would say that the first reason for that and the main reason for that was the visit to New Zealand and the putting in people's mind there's an amazing country mm -hmm. on the other side of the world which is actually a lot closer than we think and it has an amazing people mm -hmm. and it was a real consciousness raiser for New Zealand if mm -hmm. you like. Again, I am touched and overwhelming all, all by you know, what you have telling me. Mm. And uh, in front of me, this is the book. This is show the photos of the visit. So this is uh, the collect collection of the photos during the royal visit, dated back in 1962. Yes. So that book was actually put together by um, the Royal Thai Embassy in Wellington and Kun Norichit, who is now the um, Constitutional Drafting Committee spokesperson, was the ambassador at the time. So the actual, um, at the end, the message is from Kun Norichit, which is very good. So when you are um, working and living in Thailand, I think uh, over the year you have learned a lot because from listening to you, uh, seems to me that you know Thailand quite well, you know, um, you, are, you have an insight of what happened in Thailand. Um, what can you learn from Their Majesty? Particularly, uh, Their Majesty has, you know, devoted uh, themselves a lot in terms of the um, rural development, mm. the agricultural development mm. in this country, mm. and of course, uh, the concept of the uh, sufficiency economy, mm. economy mm. or the philosophy of the sufficiency eco economy how that can be you know uh, useful or can be learned mm. in your perception mm. well look, um i mean the majesties definitely as i said i think um when they went to new zealand i know they were also traveling uh, extensively internationally and i think they really did uh, register thailand in the minds of people in a way that uh, other countries didn't just just didn't because they didn't have their monarchs out making a very positive impression mm -hmm. uh, about um, themselves and also about uh, Thailand and you know its relationship with the world. I think in terms of um, the sufficiency economy, I mean when we've gone around and looked around Thailand, so um, we've obviously with my family visited the beaches, your beautiful beach resorts, but we've also been uh, extensively around Thailand and um, s certainly when we went up to Chiang Mai and um, Lampang I uh, saw quite a few of the King's projects up there and really impressed with the innovation if you like and the determination to find different ways and to test whether or not certain things could happen so I saw you know the successful plantations of coffee, mm -hmm. macadamia nuts, strawberries, peaches all of these fruits and vegetables which are actually very economically a very good return for the farmers and and the insight to say well let's test these and let's see if these will work in these areas so I think the hard work and determination and the uh, the idea that we can do things differently mm -hmm. in Thailand and that we can do things better and we can do 
get more money from different crops and that sort of thing. So I think those sorts of ideas from the king, um, you know, really help Thailand's development. I think and mm -hmm. and continue. I think to show show a way forward. Uh, you know, for your for your farmers and your agricultural producers. Um, in terms of uh, what what we can do together in those areas, I mean, New Zealand is a world leader in dairy, in, mm -hmm. in terms of dairy cows and dairying, and also at livestock, so sheep, uh, uh, you know, uh, cattle, those sorts of things. We we are actually Thailand also is has quite um, big industries. So we're very open um, to looking for real ways to cooperate and to uh, share our knowledge, if you like. So these are areas where we, we really are very good. And when we, we have a very successful trade relationship with Thailand, we do a lot of, you sell us basically a lot of machinery and a lot of manufactured goods, um, refrigerators, cars, computer components. We sell Thailand quite a bit of food but we're not in the business of putting Thai farmers out of business. We're really looking for opportunities to feed into your high value manufacturing industries which then export food to the world. So that your idea of being a food bowl of Asia uh -huh. is one that we really think we can help and contribute to. So in areas like dairy and livestock and horticulture, mm -hmm. food safety, all those areas, we are very open and looking for opportunities to share our knowledge and exchange knowledge with Thailand. And of course, I think I understand that you met with the Prime Minister and um, what did he say? Normally he would um, you know, encourage our, um, our friends, foreign friends, that uh, now it's the best time for, for I, mean, I mean, moving forward together and to collaborate on uh, the area that we are ready. Yeah. And um, he always suggests uh, our friend to explore the potential um, of one another and try to find the best practice to cooperate. Have you, um, you know, talked to anyone else uh, in the government? Sure, we have a very good relationship with the Ministry of Commerce, with uh, Minister Apurity and all her officials, um, and because we have a very successful trade and economic relationship, um, so we have a lot of exchange there. But uh, I also meet, um, I've met the Minister of Agriculture, uh, the Minister of Education. I mean, I've, I've met a number of ministers and the areas for cooperation and collaboration are actually right in front of us. We have a, a very strong trade relationship between New Zealand and Thailand, which mm -hmm. goes back now 11 years to a trade agreement, which has been very successful between Thailand and New Zealand. In terms of tourism, we have very strong tourism both ways, and I've met your tourism minister, and we've talked about the opportunities for collaboration and information sharing there. I should say in that regard New Zealand deeply appreciates Thai Air and the service it provides to New Zealand. It provides a direct link mm -hmm. uh, five times a week from Bangkok to Auckland okay. and uh, it used to be four, it's gone to five and we're hoping uh, eventually to talk to Kun Charimporn and encourage him to look at going every day, seven, uh -huh. seven days a week. But look, the, the link they provide is essential for the movement of people, trade, tourism. So we are, are very grateful for the support we get from Thai Airways. Education is a huge area of cooperation. Yes. You know that we have about three and a half thousand Thai students in New Zealand. Yes. They are doing uh, at school, at university, mm -hmm. or English language training. Mm -hmm. We welcome Thai students, they're very uh, well liked in New Zealand, and back over the years the New Zealand government has provided many scholarships for yes. Thai students to go to New Zealand, and we still provide a small number for masters and PhD students to study in New Zealand. I think there's a lot of opportunities there and I know also as you look at education reform inside your country and uh, also you know, English language, yes. these, are, these are areas where we can help. Uh, uh, you know, New Zealand is seen I think by Thai parents as a safe place to go and um, it's, it's not huge cities and it doesn't have the problems that come with enormous cities, you know, so a lot of, a lot of Thai parents feel very comfortable sending their kids to, to New Zealand for, for schooling. Um, the other area I think um, we, we cooperate a lot is in the Mekong area, in the Mekong region and, yes. and also internationally um, in the United Nations and those sorts of areas and, and many 
uh, areas, New Zealand and Thailand, hold hands and work very closely together. Mm -hmm. Will you talk about the um, 60th anniversary of the relationship between our two countries? Any plan to celebrate or uh, what kind of activity mm -hmm. that would um, help to, to, to celebrate this special occasion? Well, we're actually coming to the end of a year of celebration, so we've had ah. we, we had a, a very big uh, function at the Foreign Ministry on the day of the anniversary, which was the 29th of March. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but we've had a number of things throughout the year in education and trade, people-to-people um, -people links. We had a film festival uh, earlier in the year, so we've done a number of things throughout the year, and also the Royal Thai Embassy in Wellington has also done a number mm -hmm. of things to promote the relationship and to celebrate 60 years of very good friendship mm -hmm. and to look ahead to another 60 years and beyond of even better friendship. Thailand is very important to New Zealand. We um, uh, look at Thailand and we've got a long-standing friendship. Our friendship with Singapore, for example, is 51 years old. Mm -hmm. Our diplomatic relationship with China is 43 years old. Oh. With Vietnam, it's 41 years old. So actually, if you look back and you think New Zealand and Thailand's relationship, it's one of the longer relationships in the Asian region. It and is really, yeah. It it, is. And, and it's, it, it signifies our um, judgment that you are a very important player. Mm -hmm. Your place in mainland Southeast Asia gives you economic and political influence mm -hmm. and uh, you know we are true friends of Thailand and always looking for opportunities to work with you. What about, can you think of you know, what would be um, the picture of relationship between Thailand and New Zealand next 60 years? Well in 60 years time I'd like to think uh, there will continue to be many many high students in New Zealand. The face of New Zealand is changing. I think um, I think ties going to New Zealand for the first time will find New Zealand less white or less European than they think. Mm. And that's a changing demographic. We, we, we welcome immigration. We try to be a tolerant and open and understanding society. Mm -hmm. And so we, um, we are very welcoming of people from different countries and people with different religions and uh, try to just be accommodating and accept the strengths that uh, people bring. So I hope that that sort of positive and friendly attitude that we have as a people and as a country means that we'll see more students, we'll see more interaction between Thai government and Thai business and the New Zealand government and New Zealand business and just a closer, stronger friendship. Our friendship from 60 years ago to now has moved and grown significantly and I expect that it will continue on that same trajectory over the coming years. Well, thank you very much for your insight and your, um, your very uh, informative information. And I mean, that assure, um, you know the relationship between our two countries. And thank you for being so um, generous and so thoughtful about uh, what happened in Thailand. Thank you for all um, gesture that you have shown to the Thai people. Thank you, Your Excellency, for sharing us your insight with us today. On behalf of the Thai public, we thank you for your kindness and we shall always remember you being with us on that historic day. We wish you a very pleasant and successful tenure in Thailand. Thank you for joining the special episode of The Insider this week. See you again next week. Sadi Club.